We we'll call this meeting to order. Let the record reflect that all members of council are present, save uh, Mr. Thompson. I think he's the only one missing tonight. Um, I need a motion for the approval of the, of the agenda, please. Move to approve. I have a motion by Ms. Crawford to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Malcolm. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. That passes. Uh, the consent agenda this month is uh, the council minutes from May 14th, planning commission minutes from March 19th, uh, the April historic preservation, downtown development, convention and visitors bureau minutes as well. Need a motion for the approval of the consent agenda, please. Move to approve. I have a motion to approve by Ms. Malcolm. Is there a second? Okay. Second. second by Ms. Crawford. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion carries, that passes. Um, I have two presentations tonight. Uh, first, I've, I've asked uh, Tish McRae to bring in her team uh, from the Walton Teen Advocacy Board. Uh, and there seem to be a few of you, and I appreciate you're your all coming. Um, Tish is having some voice issues tonight, uh, so she has asked someone to speak. Someone want to stand up? Savannah. Hey, Savannah, thank you for coming. Hello, everyone. Today I'm here on behalf of the Walton Youth Project, specifically our recently upcoming newspaper. You may have already noticed the copies that have been provided. And to those who could not make it and are interested, we have extras at the City Hall. The incredible founder and editor of our newspaper, Ms. Sarah Watts, regrets that she could not attend tonight. But nevertheless, her work is greatly appreciated. So my introduction into the world of journalism, reporting, and newspaper production was through a story on the very talented young Jalen Battle, right here behind me. He accomplished the unprecedented in his sport through sheer dedication and hard work, placing first at state for track and field and receiving countless other prestigious awards and recognitions. To say he blew me away would be an understatement. Through our coverage of him, we were able to give him a basis to reach others with his story and likely inspire and touch the lives of many individuals. And imagine, this is only one story. To highlight a few others, we captured the development of a youth-led garden project, coverage of local elections and youth involvement, and impressive projects accomplished by local students in schools. Just imagine the impact and difference that could be made the farther along we bring this newspaper. The current schedule we have planned is new issues on a monthly basis in a digital and traditional digital paper format. We are always looking for stories to cover, articles to include, and advertisements to showcase. After all, any news from our great Walton County is great news. Thank you so much for coming in. You want to introduce Jaden? So right behind me is Jalen Battle and his coach. Thank you so much. Hey, coach. Hey, Jalen. Do you mind stepping forward for me, please? I have um, I reached out to Javian Oliver this morning, and I ended up talking with a mom. I've not been able to get in touch with her unless she sent me something a minute, a minute ago. She is going to be sending a message, so I'll get it to you. Uh, Tommy Pinkerton, your mentor, right, um, had also sent me a note uh, that Mr. Dickinson has, uh, is, I've asked Mr. Dickinson to read, so would you fire away, please, David? All right, thank you. Jalen, I'm David Dickinson. I think the reason the mayor wanted me to read this is uh, I've been a runner for 40-something years, not nearly as good a one as you are, but uh, <laughs> I still do it at my old age. So, this is from Pastor Pinkerton. <clears throat> Jalen, track is a lot like life. In track, everyone is running the same race, but only one person finishes first. The point of track <clears throat> is to run your best, and to win, you need to be the fastest and the most dedicated. To excel in track, you have to practice, stretch, and listen to your coaches. Life follows the same principles. <clears throat> Not everyone who is alive is truly living. I encourage you to run the race of life with the same dedication you have for track. Listen to your mentors, surround yourself with people who have purpose, and always push yourself forward. Never look back, pray and seek God's guidance. 
Surround yourself with people who care about your future. Don't worry about what others think. Not everyone will be excited about the opportunities you will have. Remember, your critics can, be your, can become your motivators. Study, seek God, pray, and run your race with determination. Run and never look back. I love you, Jalen, and I believe in you. And young man, those are definitely words of wisdom. If you follow those words and Pastor Pinkerton's example, uh, you will go far in life. Awesome. Jalen, thank you. So this is the first one? Be framed at your house? First one. Everyone should keep this okay. because you're going to be in the Olympics. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. like, wow. That's right. That's the first time you in the <laughs> <laughs> and now we do, we have to go to practice because we're leaving for nationals Thursday. You mean you don't want to see wow. do this? <laughs> yes. Well, congratulations to you Thursday. as well. And Thanks again. I appreciate it. Hey. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> we're the conference champs. Good luck. That's also good. Luck. How you doing? <laughs> Anytime we can say we beat Loganville is a fabulous day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Good luck. Keep us in the loop, okay? Um, next, uh, we have a proclamation for Waste and Recycling Workers Week. Um, it's June 17th to, the, to June 21st, 2024, whereas the nation celebrates the week of June 21st as National Professional Waste and Recycling Workers Week, and whereas the early, earliest garbage reg regulation efforts began in 3000 BC when the first landfill was developed in Crete, where large holes were dug for refuse, and whereas since that time sanitation workers have worked selflessly and tirelessly in all types of environments and at risk to themselves to provide sanitation services to protect communities and residents, prevent disease, and keep our communities clean, safe, and beautiful, and whereas according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the eradication of many diseases in the Western world is due in large part to higher public sanitation standards resulting from effective garbage disposal, and whereas Georgia's men and women employed in the waste and recycling industries make significant contributions to the safety, health, and welfare of our residents processing millions of tons of garbage and recycling annually, and whereas every year the Georgia Chapter of Solid Waste Association of North America celebrates Waste and Recycling Workers Week to honor those we depend on for the collection and proper disposal of waste, recyclables, and leaf and limbs to promote clean and tidy communities. Now, therefore, I, John S. Howard, Mayor of the City of Monroe, do recognize this week of June 17th through June 21st, 2024, as Waste and Recycling Workers Week, and witness whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the City of Monroe to be affixed this 11th day of June, the year of our Lord, 2024. Danny? Not, not too much. I, I thought we had some of our... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Patrick Russell, he's, he's part, of, uh, part of our team. Uh, he's our Thank automatic you, side loader operator. He's one of the best in the state. <laughs> I appreciate your time and I appreciate your work because I know it's not easy. Um, moving to public comments, I think we only have one tonight. Miss Garrett? Ms. Hey, Lydia, how are you? Thank you for coming. Thank you to the council and to Mayor, Mayor Howard and to all of you. I just want to say good evening to everybody. Um, I came to last month's city council meeting, and I was here to support someone who wanted to ask for use of the downtown green area for cancer awareness. Um, I understand, Mayor Howard, that this year uh, the downtown green isn't being used by used for anything other than city events. So what I'm here to ask is that cancer awareness be made a city event because I feel that this is something that a lot of people need to know about. 
Um, just a little bit about, I had some notes, a little bit, because I really wasn't intending on coming. This was a last minute thing that I had. But um, Miss Hattie Whitlock, she is so passionate about cancer awareness. Uh, she is one who will just come up to you and let you know that this is something that has happened with her and her family. And the fact that, you know, that's something that people do need to be aware of. I can say that she has spoken out and said that her initial diagnosis of breast cancer was not through her routine mammogram tech check. This, she found out through a lump that was in her armpit. And I know that she has had two sisters and one brother to die from, lung, from breast cancer. Um, and so this is just something that is, is super important and it's, it's just something big. I love to hear her speak about that. Um, and, and she would let people know that when it comes to our medical history, family history, that's not something that we should be silent about, you know, to just let people know you need to talk with your family members to find out what's going on. You know, so because everybody know that early detection uh, is the key to a successful outcome. So um, I'm just asking that you all consider that, and I thank you for your time well, and your consideration. Thank you, thank you for coming in, and I'm sure we will be discussing that. We'll be discussing programming at the Downtown Green as, okay. as we move forward. But yes, and, and totally great. With a, a sister uh, who has breast cancer, uh, a very good friend of uh, an employee of the city uh, whose wife is battling it right now. Uh, and, you know, I think we've all lost friends and family. I was going to say, just looking around, I'm sure there isn't one person in here who doesn't know someone who's been affected in some way or another by cancer. Totally. So agree. this isn't something that Miss Hattie talks about in October, you know, during Cancer Awareness Month. This is something that she lives on a daily basis. Right. Thank you for coming Thank in. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Moving to business items. Mr. Probst, City Administrator update. And before you, before you do that, yes, Tisha, I appreciate you bringing all these good-looking, nice, well-spoken, brilliant, well above average uh, teenagers here, but you don't have to stay. So if y'all want to bolt, you, wanna, you can bolt now before the business part or just give me a time. All right, and I know you're not feeling well, so... Okay, thank you, Mr. Probst. All right, uh, just a couple of quick updates here for myself and uh, Mr. Bailey's part. Um, he's not here tonight. Uh, we are making um, substantial progress on our 2020 bond projects. Rodney's got the bulk of those along with Mike McGuire. Um, they may touch on those, but overall we're finishing up a lot of the easement work to make a lot of these projects come to fruition. Right now, I think I've got one more left for the raw and finished water line project. And then I think we have um, a few more to do for the, the water tank and some gas, um, the, the gas expansion out of the jail. So we're finishing up a lot of those. Um, also have about two to three more easements left for what we've been calling the Transportation's Alternative Grant Project, i.e. the streetscape that runs from Marable to Highland um you know down south broad or north broad right here and then over to north lumpkin that'll completely change the look of, of that area uh, just a couple easements left for that and uh, i was last told we would get to construction in early 2025 they'll let the contract in december is the general plan uh, to turn it over to us to let the contract um planning has started on the refurbishment of what was uh till recently hammock park where we're going to put the new Monroe sign um, and then all that goes along with that. We're planning some seating areas and so on and so forth, but it should be a great project in partnership with IMAC, who uh, is going to do all the work for us. Um, we're just, again, supplying the material, which he voted on last month. So a great public-private uh, project there. Uh, the Blaine Station redevelopment uh, project, that has now closed. We did get an application in or a submittal and I'm reviewing it right now. Um, there'll be some negotiations. Of course, it won't be a very quick project. 
Um, but over the next few months, we'll we'll start to move forward on on that redevelopment. Hopefully, if all works out. Uh, and then on stormwater, you know, we've been talking about that for years. Stormwater is um, <laughs> what's in everybody's face over the last couple of years, especially with the torrential downpours we've had, especially earlier this year. Uh, and so we are now completing a full asset inventory and master plan that will then come before you here in just a few months uh, to set up a, a true stormwater utility. Uh, so that's going to be a huge leap forward in stormwater management. I think the county is working on something similar, but not nearly to the scale that we're doing. But uh, we're just trying to future-proof our city in the stormwater realm. That's all I have right now, Mayor. Thank you. Um, are there any questions for Logan? We have a plan to more clearly mark these storm drains that lead to the waterways. So, you know, um, they've been putting medallions on each one of these storm drains. So is there something else that we need? Well, we talked about, I think we discussed it at one meeting, that it would be good if we could have them. You don't really see those, especially when they pile debris on top of them. And, you know, I don't know. I mean, I just thought it was something we had thought about. Yeah, I mean, we, we're going to try to do the best we can to keep those clear. Some of that's going to just take general enforcement and being out there in the field. Um, Hopefully in most new neighborhood developments, you've got the elevated storm drains, right? So ho hopefully people wouldn't pile up trash on that, but it's just really just going to be an enforcement mechanism for the most part. Yeah, I know they're there. You just don't. I don't think pe it's an education process, too. I don't think people really realize what those mean and and. What, it, what the implications are if they clog those drains. Or a lot of people I know on Walton Street put their debris right on top of them. And, um, you know, it's just a matter of, and I don't know how you get the word out. Just more there. education. It's, it's going to come along with our stormwater master plan. There is an education component in there. Are there any other questions? Thank you, Logan. Do you want to take Chris, too? I just kind of got out. Them, yeah. Okay. Um, moving to department reports, uh, Mr. Croy, Central Services. Thank you, Mayor. So, um, yeah, excited to say we um, are, if you haven't noticed, our splash pad over at the town green has been a huge hit. Um, ever since the beginning of May when Sandy had our um, grand opening over there, it has been packed. So, um, through May, it was only open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Started June 1st, which was kind of the start of the summer especially for the school system here in Walton County. Um, we opened that Monday through Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, our visitor center right here in town, um, I know I've mentioned it, we're doing the exterior rehab on the outside, and um, it's coming along nicely. Was actually able to go down there to this afternoon and view some of the colors, some of the samples that they're providing us, so I'm excited about that. Um, Street Logics, which is the company that I've been mentioning the last couple of meetings that we're using to inventory all of our streets and sidewalks and our ramps in town. They're here currently still collecting data. They're doing our sidewalks and our ramps. Um, you might see them out. They're going to be on these little electric scooters riding around town. They're going to be videotaping, taking pictures, taking measurements of uh, the sidewalks and the ramps. And that's really all I have for tonight, unless you have any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions for Mr. Croy? What's the end goal of that inventory? What are we going to use that information for? Um, me and Mr. Steele will use that to help us come up with uh, our improvement plans moving forward. Yeah, for our streets, sidewalks, ramps. Moving to code reports. Uh, Brad, do you want this one? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'm not much to supplement to the executive summary that you provided, uh, other than the form based code, which is probably the biggest thing that currently working on right now at the staff level is getting that review complete and getting comments back to our consultant for their uh, so they can make those changes some of the, some of it's just quality control level amendments nothing too too big from a policy standpoint that would fall in your hands when they are completed with those amendments then the council will have an opportunity to take a look at that draft hopefully we'll get that done here in the next few weeks and get that back to the consultant so we can get moving forward with that this summertime uh, before the summer's over with uh, as far as pre-applications and meetings for new projects, that is an ongoing waterfall. So that 
constantly being approached by a new development in the city. And uh, even today, this afternoon, I think in the last hour before the meeting, I had three contacts about new projects that are, you know, interested in coming to Monroe. So it, it never stops in a positive way. You know, there's constantly people seeking to be here. That's, That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Are there any questions for Mr. Callender? Thank you, Brad. Um, I, I really do appreciate the, the work that you put into it, Brad. It is, it is day and night in reading and in in attending the New Urbanist uh, Conference. Um, it's a lot of work, and it's, it's really, really impressive. Thank you. Um, I'm going to skip over Brian with economic development again. Is it, that's all right with you? Yeah, so uh, in the future, I'm going to have him prepare uh, some more robust reports, but um, he, he's been very, very busy. I thought I wanted uh, to let him get his feet wet first. Yeah, that's, ex <laughs> that's exactly what we're doing, but he's been very busy um, courting prospects and uh, working with the Development Authority and Walton Works and all that. And we're so excited that you're here. Um, moving to Ms. Thompson, finance report, please. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I don't have a whole lot outside of the finance report that you have before you. Um, I'll be glad to answer any questions that you have um, from that report. Um, I will note that our utility payment kiosk that is in the drive through was down for several weeks. Um, it is now back up and running, um, thanks to Kathleen Lewis, our head cashier, um, for making that happen. She stayed on top of that and got that completed for us. Um, and with that being said, um, today Kathleen was... Um, Congratulated for transitioning over to the vacant um, permit clerk position in the code department. Um, we hate to lose her in our department, but I know she'll be a great asset to that department and add great value over there. Um, and then later on the agenda, um, you'll have the financial report of 2023 that'll be presented to you by Will um, from Malden Jenkins, our external auditors. Um, that'll be later in the, in the, on the agenda. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Thank you. Are there any questions for Ms. Thompson? Thank you, Beth. Uh, Chief Dykes, fire. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first of all, you have the packet for April in front of you with our incident data, which was on par with our previous years for call volume. For those of you that came in the front this evening, excited to, uh, as someone said, flex and uh, <laughs> Jeremiah. Um, happy, to, happy to actually have possession of our new engine one, our new fire engine. It is out front. Thank you, Council, for affording us the ability to get this very much needed piece of equipment. And we are very close to actually being able to put it in service, still waiting on a few items to come in. And then it will be responding to calls in the city. And then lastly, uh, I wanted to brag on our, on our crews. For any of you all that have ever taken American Heart Association CPR, you've heard about the chain of survival, which discusses early access to CPR and early defibrillation. And that's the reason you see AEDs in our high schools or in our public buildings and so forth. Um, on the morning of May 26th, there was a motor vehicle collision that was dispatched in front of uh, 602 Church Street, which for those of you all that are, have been here for a little while, that is the old high school, which is now the Monroe Country Day School. Upon our crew's arrival, they found that a single vehicle had left the road, had struck a fire hydrant in a tree, and there was a bystander performing chest compressions on a male subject that was on the ground, and there was an injured female that was still remaining in the vehicle. Our crews Im immediately continued in assisting with CPR, applied the AED, and were able to defibrillate the patient two times before EMS arrived, which the ambulance was about five minutes after fire department arrival. Um, patient was, both patients were transported to the hospital. Uh, the female had traumatic injuries, but was, is doing okay. Before they got to the hospital, the male patient that was in full cardiac arrest on arrival had a pulse and was attempting to cough and have some signs of life. Um, he was transferred out, once stabilized to another facility, and received uh, appropriate care. One of our firefighters shared with me yesterday the Facebook post that that individual posted asking for continued prayer during his recovery and his wife's recovery, but he is alive, fully functional, has a long road ahead of him, but 
just really want to reiterate how it takes an entire community. That person pulling up on that wreck, knowing what to do, starting CPR, then fire department first response taking over basic life support, and then ALS from <coughs> EMS coming in later, and that is about as miraculous and uh, perfect of an outcome for that type of situation. And ultimately, the wreck was caused from him going into cardiac arrest while driving and losing control. But our guys did an outstanding job. And it's unfortunately, it's very rare that we get the opportunity to recognize and say, hey, you did CPR and you, you saved somebody. But that is really the case here. So I just wanted to bring that to, to y'all's attention and also encourage everyone here to, uh, to learn CPR. And we have avenues for that if you're interested. So come talk to me if, if that's something you're interested in. That'd be great, Chief. Thank you. Are there any questions? Thank you so much. Chief Watts? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so the month of April, we actually did our um, uh, DEA drug take back. That's where citizens are able to come to the police department with expired medications and stuff to turn in that's out of date. And so we collected 56 pounds of uh, outdated prescription drugs that day. Uh, we also had on the 17th leadership walk and came through toward our facility, which is, you know, I encourage people to come through and look at the police department and see each division and how we perform and function as a law enforcement agency, because there's a lot of upgraded technology and training that we're implementing that I think contributes to uh, the success we're having right now. I, I'm very impressed with the success rate that we're having right now with the crime in the city of Monroe. Uh, I said it last council and I'm gonna keep saying this because it's amazing to me when I look at these numbers. I mean, we're in half what we were last year at this time. The crime has been cut in half. So that's, that's a testament to the, the level of law enforcement you have. We had uh, 2,313 incidents total. Uh, our officers conducted uh, 1,138 traffic stops. Uh, with that, you know, the traffic unit, we implemented the, the motorcycle. We bought Walton County's old motorcycle they had. And so we started uh, utilizing it downtown. We sent our traffic guys to motor school in Lawrenceville. I don't know if you guys have seen them. Surely some of y'all have seen the, the officer downtown on the, the motorcycle. So that's going to make a huge difference as well with your, you know, noise complaints, loud exhaust coming through downtown. And so, you know, we're addressing that uh, total. We had a total of uh, 98 arrests uh, and we unlocked 67 vehicles and our officers responded to 72 alarms. Now, what I also want to do was kind of spotlight one of the canine officers. It's been a while since you've heard about our canine. Of course, we have four canines that work for the police department. But this is just an example of, um, you know, the utilization of a canine program and how it can benefit. It's not always that they're going after a um, convicted felon or someone who doesn't want to go back to jail. So I'm going to just read a, this, this quick little paragraph. On April 11, 2024, Corporal Bailey and canine Enzo responded to a suicide threat call for service. A female subject got into an argument at her residence, left on foot, and attempted to jump in front of a moving vehicle. The female then took, I guess this was like a sharp stick or something, and put it to her neck in an attempt to cut her own throat, then ran off into the woods. Canine Enzo was placed in a muzzle to prevent an incidental bite and sent into the wood line to track. After about 20 yards in the woods, he picked up a good track, and the female was located a short distance in the woods hiding in thick, thick vegetation. She was removed by the support officers and taken in for a 1013 evaluation. So that's, I mean, that's just a testament of utilization, the utilization of a, a good canine program, how it can help save people's lives. So, and again, you know, if you get a chance, uh, I ask that you at least look at these numbers. It's impressive to me on, I'm going to keep bragging on it. I mean, it's, it is, it's, you know, our crime rate is, uh, it, the clearance rate is 53%. Crimes against persons is down by 50%. Crimes against property is down 54%. And crimes against society is down 48%. And that's year over year? That's, so this is from January of last year to June 11th compared to January of this year. That, the that's amazing. In, in the previous six years, we were down 20%. I mean, so... I, it's shocking to me. Congratulations, and thank you. Are there any questions for the chief? Done, man. Um, Mr. Smith, solid waste. Thank you, Mayor. A um, couple things. Um, we picked up over 157 mattresses last month. Um, cost us a little over $4,000. Uh, 
Uh, we did recoup a little over 1600 by charging out to some of the customers, but uh, that's all we could get. We still got random and illegal dumping sites we, we trying to clean up. Uh, we're in the process of staging our collection trailer. Um, we have to install a ramp um, so we can have easy access to this trailer because we do not want to put our hands on these things. <laughs> so we're just trying to we're trying to make sure we we do it you know effective and efficiently. So, uh, but there is a lot of them that we we're, we're still picking up. Uh, our tonnage report, our transfer station report, um, we're still down close to six percent, uh, like thirty seven percent compared to twenty two. Um, the rate increases really drove uh, the tonnage rate down. Um, if you see one of these tags on your blue cart. Don't panic. <laughs> we just, it's, it's an educational piece um, to let you know that uh, the items that you have inside your container are not acceptable. And there's some check marks on here to let you know what's, what's acceptable and what's not. Uh, we have a little tariff card at the bottom. We record the address. And um, just kind of get you uh, to really make sure that uh, you don't have a whole lot of garbage in it. We're starting to get a high volume of garbage you put in the blue containers. So that's that's not good, that's contamination. Also, if you get three of these, uh, we're gonna pull your cart and suspend your service. You just call the office and if you wanna do it, you're gonna have to do it right. <laughs> okay. And the last thing I got, uh, we are running our modified schedule next week, uh, June 10th. Um, Monday and Tuesday customers are on regular schedule. We have no collection on Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday customers will be picked up on Thursday, and Thursday customers will be picked up on Friday. And I take any questions that you might have. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Are there any questions for Danny? I appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Still. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, unless there's some questions about the report you have in front of you, I'll be really quick. Um, it's hot, uh, which means it's prime season for paving. Uh, if it's not raining, that's what we've been doing and we will continue to do through the summer. We're in the middle, well not in the middle, we're in the introductory steps to the LMIG, LMIG portion of our paving program this summer. Um, the guys are currently out on West Marable, no, yeah, East Marable, excuse me, East Marable with our new coal planter and skid steer, um, making some really clean, square, good-looking patches. It's been, it's proven to be a very efficient addition. It's not as fancy as the fire truck, um, <laughs> but we're already using it. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it has really improved that process. So, nine out of 10 days, uh, those guys will be fooling with, with hot asphalt. Um, for the next six to eight weeks. Um, but we also have made good progress on the demo on South Madison. Um, it's cleaning that, that area up a pretty good bit. Um, other than that, I'll, I'll be glad to take any questions. Are there any questions? Or, um, Mayor, but are you all gonna go? It'll go from city limits back to Sorrel Street is the deep patching portion okay. of that. Any other questions for Mr. Still? Thank you, Jeremiah. Mr. McGuire. Thank you, Mayor. Just a couple things I want to touch on here real quick for you uh, in the telecom department. Um, fiber deployments rolling along. Every, every month I come to you all and say, this is the month we're going to cross over. And so when I, when I went and pulled, we are literally at 49.81% on our fiber customers. <laughs> and if I were to look right now, I guarantee you we're over that threshold because I'm about a week out on my reporting. So... Uh, so I'm pretty confident next month will we'll be finally be that, that crossover point. But it did get me looking. I, I got thinking to myself, you know, we're, we're putting in tons of fiber everywhere. You know, why are we not crossing over quite as fast as we want to? Uh, and I went back and looked, and for about one out of every four installations we do are customers who have never had service with us ever. So we're gaining a lot of new customers as part of that process. So it's, it's kind of a, a good problem to have, but things are rolling along pretty good. Uh, I'm really confident and, and happy in the way that they're turning up new areas. We just turned up uh, Winfield subdivision just last week. That, that's over 100 lots just in that neighborhood by itself. 
and uh, they continue, and I've got them in the report there, they continue to give us a list of streets and neighborhoods every month that are coming on and, and being active. So things are rolling on really good there. One thing I also want to highlight is, is how easy it is to do work with the city of Monroe Telecom. We, we've had a couple of instances. We had a, uh, we had a builder approach us about trying to work out with a way that, you know, we could make it easier for when their, their customers purchase a home that they could activate their services quicker once we got everything we need and, and literally cut down the amount of time that it takes to deploy. So we've started doing some pre-installs in some of these areas and, uh, and those numbers actually, I'm only counting active current customers. So this is not even counting the pre-installs that we've started to do. So really excited about that. If that works well, that'll be a, a really easy process for us to help get internet into customers' hands a lot quicker and maybe shave off a couple of days during that process. Um, we had a gentleman approach us that had a very, really unique need to set up a fiber connection for some monitoring of an outdoor environment that they had. And so he, he got in touch with us and said, hey, here's, I got a really weird situation here and I just wanna know, can, can you service some telecom here so I can achieve this goal? And literally within a couple of days, we had some service set up for him to where he could hook up his equipment and do what he needed to do. And it was a huge help to him. You won't find stuff like that in, at major carriers. You know, they're going to tell you to, to take a walk, but we're really easy to work with. And I, and I think that's a, a real big strength of us. We just met with one of the, um, the, the folks over at Walton Village this week and sat down with their maintenance people and come up with a game plan. Within a week or two, we're going to convert the whole complex probably in a week. So it's just a it's real strength of these guys that are out there in the field doing work and stuff, just being flexible and being able to, to work with developers and contractors in a way. It's, it's nice and refreshing to hear people say, we love working with the city of Monroe. It's, it's, it's easy to work with you guys, and we're not used to that. And so that, that always just makes me feel good. So um, one thing we are doing is we're kind of ramping up a little bit of some marketing opportunities. Um, when anytime our contractors are going through and splicing areas and, and putting, um, you know, for areas for conversion that are ready to go, they've started hanging out door hangers to mm -hmm. let the customers know that they're ready for service. And we just, uh, hopefully by the end of the week, I'm going to have some nice big signs that I can plant in these new subdivisions that uh, haven't, be the first time they've ever had service with us that will tell them, hey, you've got high speed fiber, give us a call, we're ready to hook you up and, and ready to go. So that's, that's coming. That hopefully will be starting next week. So we're really excited about that. On the stream and TV front, uh, we tripled the amount of counts that we had from last month. It's, it's still a, a small amount in the grand stream, uh, scope of things, but as... You had it. Grand stream of things. Grand stream of things. There you go. <laughs> uh, as, as we approach, and as I keep, I keep saying, I really look towards the, the, the July time frame. You're probably going to see that really scale up. We, we had uh, one individual purchased 11 accounts from us, just one business purchased 11 accounts from us, said they had 50 plus TVs that they wanted to get hooked up on streaming and want to know if we could make it happen. We said, absolutely. So, um, so I, I really anticipate that number to keep going up. You may have seen it or not. They just started going out uh, last week, the letters to our customers to let them know that the discontinuation of legacy cable TV service is coming. When is it? July what? Uh, the disconnect date is August 5th. August 5th. August 5th. And uh, we worked with Ms. Thompson in the customer service department on that. She was real instrumental in helping us getting, getting coordinating to get that and get them in customers' hands. So they should receive it not once but twice. So there should be a, a well enough of awareness when this, when this time comes to make that transition. People should, should have enough knowledge and know that we've, we've tried to get this letter in front of them and let them, let them know that this is coming too. So, and then the last thing I want to touch on that's really not in the, in the department report there, uh, it just kind of happened just a couple days ago, but we've, we've kind of started looking at our infrastructure, our telecom infrastructure and building infrastructure. And one of the first pieces of the puzzle that we did is we, we did a, a big switch replacement in City Hall. For most people who come in and do work here, it's not going to mean one thing to them. Uh, it, work continues just like it normally goes. But what it does is it allows us to increase the amount of bandwidth that we can provide to employees and desk connections and off connections here by about 10 times as much. And so even though their speed is still going to be gigabit at their desk, it, it out opens the door for multiple people to be able to tap into a lot more bandwidth than they have. And this first piece of the puzzle allows us to 
take this and push this out to other places and other facilities that are city owned. So we're really excited to kickstart and get this going. It was about a five and a half hour process and I got to give David Garcia and his team a hand. They went in about a week in advance, labeled everything, and, and it could not have gone as seamless as it did. Even though it took five and a half, it was just very tedious. Uh, but it went very, very smooth, and we were all very, very pleased in how that turned out. So uh, we'll have more information on that as it, as it goes through. But that's about all I got. If anybody has any questions, just let me know, and I'll be glad to answer anything I can. Mr. Mayor, I don't have any questions, but I do want to make a comment since we have a fairly light agenda tonight. And it's a cautionary tale about the Monroe uh, Telecom's uh, dumbest user, which would be <laughs> me. So I <clears throat> had a little incident uh, a week or so ago, and I was out, you know, patrolling around the cottage and <clears throat> said, gee, you know, there's about five miles of old coax cable run all around my house. It's time that stuff came off the wall. We're going to take it off, touch up the paint, everything will be good, right? So I get out there, and it won't just pull off, so I'm cutting coax cable. Well, this is fine because I've got fiber optic. They came. They installed the modem, it's all there, right? Sitting over in the corner, right? Everything's good, right? So I've cut all this coax cable. A little while later, Dr. Rita summons me into the house. And says, David, I'll leave out a little bit. Of it. What'd you do? You cut the internet off. And I'm like, Rita, we have fiber optic. We're, I was cutting coax. Well, you know what? I did not look over in the corner where all that's located to see if there actually was a connecting cable from the fiber modem to the router. And when I looked, oh no, it's still running through the coax. <laughs> so we called the city. Or Rita called them and explained that some idiot had <laughs> got her internet off. So the cautionary tale is that the private contractor it was supposed to hook it up at the street, had never hooked it up at the street. It wasn't even hooked up. Uh, so we were still running off of coax. So don't go cut your coax without first checking to make sure that fiber optic modem is connected. So there you Haven't go. you said, um, Mike, that that is the case in a, lot, in a lot of areas that we're still running? Some people are still running off the coax? Yeah, where the fiber, so there, there's a lot of areas still where infrastructure for fiber has been installed, but it has not been spliced in and made hot and live to be serviced yet. And in those areas, we still have a lot of cable modem customers. Our cable modem counts are decreasing every month, but we're still adding customers. Even though that number is shrinking, we are still adding customers every week to the cable plant. So okay. nobody wants that gone more than this guy right here. I guarantee you. <laughs> And the mailer that's going out, it has a way to contact City Hall if you want help with that streaming. Yes, sir. It's, it's got several options. Obviously, we discussed Monroe streaming being the first option for them, but it's got a couple of other options that they can explore, a QR code they can scan that gives them a, a page of frequently asked questions and all the pricing information, telephone numbers for us to call to talk to somebody in here. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Are there any more questions for Mr. McGuire? Great report. Thank you. And I wish you the best of luck when you have to go see my parents. All right. Thank you. <laughs> um, Mr. Middlebrooks. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> uh, just following up on the comment on, that Logan made earlier, uh, we're finishing up on the easements uh, for the 24-inch raw water line. Uh, we've started clean up at the warehouse to prepare for that line as it comes through that property. Um, and we also finished up on the two easements that we need for the 16-inch water line that will go to the new water tank on Cherry Hill. Uh, we combined those two jobs since they were kind of tracking at the same speed, uh, the water line and the high-pressure gas line to the jail site. Uh, so they'll go down Sorrells and Marable, turn on Union, go down to the sharp curve there behind the police station. We'll cross under 78 there and then come up Remish Lane Water will go to the tank site. The high pressure gas line will go on down Cherry Hill and cross under 78 to feed the jail and the industrial park. Um, 
so we got both of those going. The we just completed the gas main install at Alcove Springs, new subdivision there on Double Springs Church Road. Uh, the 2022 CDBG along Glen Iris. Uh, we stopped all forward movement last Thursday uh, until the contractor could address uh, the road and the yards that they've destroyed. Uh, so. They let us know today that they've hired a professional contractor or a landscaper to come in Friday to address all the issues with those yards that have been worked in so far. Hopefully we'll get a good result from that. Uh, wrapping up the bids to uh, the designing bid for the 16 inch raw water and the, uh, the tank there on Cherry Hill, those should be out to bid hopefully by end of July. And our electric crew, uh, we're finishing up the Toller Street reconduct, and they're, uh, as well as the other crews, working on both ends of the bypass, LMP, and at Unicia, uh, removing or moving our uh, utilities. So, any questions? I'll be more than happy to try to answer those. Are there any questions for Mr. Moonbrooks? Thank you, Rodney. Thank you. Moving to department requests at the airport, Mr. Croy. Uh, before you is a um, land lease agreement uh, for between the city of Monroe and Mitchell Moon uh, for the purposes of constructing a hangar on the site. He plans to build a 60 by 60 hangar there, um, and we're just asking for approval on this agreement. Thank you, Chris. Are any questions? Are there any questions? I'll entertain a motion. Moved to approve. Thank you, Mr. Gregory. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Sams. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. <laughs> Motion carries. That passes. Uh, speaking of land leases, Mr. Croy, uh, this is agreement at site yep. C. Yeah, the second one before you is identical. It's just for a different, um, a different individual. It's also a land lease agreement between the city of Monroe and JEG Holdings um, and for the purposes of building the hangar also is asking for your approval tonight. Thank you, sir. Are there any questions, Chris, about this one? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve. We have a motion to approve by Mr. Gregory. Is there a second? Second by Ms. Sams. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. That passes. Uh, moving to new business, uh, public hearing of the de-annexation of Zero Highway 78. Mr. Callender. Thank you, Mayor. This uh, de-annexation request, uh, I've got the screen pulled up behind you that shows the entire city, just to give you some idea where this is. It doesn't have an address, but this is out here on the far western side of the city on uh, U.S. Highway 78. It is an 8.919 acre parcel never been assigned an address it was annexed into the city in 2006 and zoned to PCD and that PCD zoning and its annexation was coupled with a larger property that's across the street it's approximately over 100 acre property but the bulk of the actual PCD was part of that side and not this remnant that was part of its ownership on this side of the property that was annexed in uh, the property across the street was ultimately placed into a permanent conservation easement and at the time that this property was zoned to PCD in the plan book itself had no uses proposed for this remnant property they stated in the pattern book itself they would actually come back to the city for a proposed development on this property so nothing's ever actually been planned for this property uh, as part of that PCD so the request is to uh, the annex this property from the city and so the Walton County Board of County Commissioners they've already consented to the uh, de-annexation request as of April 2nd this year and the Planning Commission's recommendation to City Council is approval to de-annex uh, as submitted without any stipulations. Thank you Mr. Callender. Are there any questions for Brad? Hearing none, I'll declare that this portion of the meeting open for public comment. Is there anyone here who would like to speak in favor of this de-annexation? Is there anyone here opposed? Hearing no public comment, I'll declare this portion of the meeting closed, and we'll be back to revisit that in just a few minutes. Moving to the variance at 802 North Broad Street, Mr. Callender. 
Thank you, Mayor. This is 802 North Broad Street, I think more commonly known from our location reference as the Deer Acres Inn property. They're asking for a variance from Section 702, Table 11. This is the minimum uh, required public frontage for a B3 zone lot in the city. And so just a little background on this property. The hotel and the adjoining commercial building on this property were built in 1988, and so was the adjoining uh, access to the property coming off of North Broad Street. Now, in approximately 1993, I believe it was, there was a plat submitted and recorded to the clerk of courts, but that was recorded without any city approval. So the road that was constructed was never actually dedicated to the city, and so this property has no public road frontage. It's kind of a floating parcel. It's the only one in the city I'm aware of. So they are proposing tonight, uh, or requesting the council tonight, to approve a variance to allow the property to be subdivided into two tracks to separate the existing hotel building from the commercial building that was sort of an accessory to the hotel building at one time. Uh, the properties themselves will have more than 100 feet of road frontage on this private drive that exists. It is an existing access easement that provides them pro access from North Broad Street. And the premise behind the analysis, if you read the zoning, uh, the variance report in this case, uh, it's assumed that at some point, you know, with the original construction of the hotel and the manner that it was in the street that's there, that ultimately at some point in the future, if this property is ever developed, this would become a public street. And that was the reasoning behind a recommendation of approval by both staff and the Planning Commission and their recommendation is approval to grant the variance uh, as submitted without conditions. But before before moving to, to questions, Logan, did you want to? Um, I'll hit it under the new business section. Okay. Uh, are there any questions for Brad? <clears throat> You're not able to clear this portion of the meeting uh, open for the purpose of public input. Is there anyone here who'd like to speak in favor of this variance? Is there anyone here who'd like to speak against it? These are some public hearings tonight. Um, hearing no public comment, I'll declare this portion of the meeting closed, and we'll be back to revisit that in just a few minutes. Uh, moving um, back now, new business, the de-annexation of Zero Highway 78. I'll open this floor uh, to council members for the discussion and or action. So it's my understanding that we, you know, they have no access to sewer, correct? There's no utilities in this portion of the city. That's there's, what I thought. There's no city water or sewer but on makes this part sense of 78. To, yeah. You want to make a motion? Sure. I'll offer the motion. I have a motion on the floor by Ms. Malcolm. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Gregory. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Now, moving back to 802 North Broad uh, variance before opening this to council members. For discussion, uh, Logan. Please. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, just reading through the staff analysis, there's always something that you could kind of pick out and, and go a little further on. And Brad and I had discussed this just ahead of the meeting. Um, was the condition of the private drive, while it may not necessarily have to be brought up to public street standards, there are some concerns on the private drive that the applicant would probably need to resolve via their easement. Um, because we don't want to send our, you know, million dollar fire truck out there, police vehicles and sanitation to service these addresses um, if it's in, you know, unrepairable condition. So we just want them to be fully operational and potholes filled in and just bring it up to some, some level of operational standard. So when we make the motion, do we do that as an addendum? Condition. Oh, that would be my preference. I'm not saying the entire stretch needs to be repaved, but there are there are some areas that are in poor condition. So should we make it conditional on Jeremiah doing an inspection and them abiding by his recommendation? I mean, I, 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 I caution against that because it's not yeah, it's public street. standard. I I think before we do anything with that, we need to have some objective mm -hmm. criteria. As we can't just say, well, you got to bring it up to some standard that somebody's going to tell you after the fact. I think we need to inspect it, present an objective statement. This is what has to be done before we as the condition. So who performs that analysis? So you table it. Um, 
you know, I don't know that it necessarily needs to be tabled, but conditioned on on COs perhaps um, being granted to that to that property, um, that we do some sort of inspection to ensure that we have operational ability to service it. So, Logan, if I may, if I may, Logan, sir, sir. plat approval may be an easy way. It may just simply before we could approve a plat to actually subdivide it, that that private access drive be suitable for both tracks. It may be as simple as that. But Let me just offer that <clears throat> if the concern is emergency response vehicles, right? And emergency and, response and sanitation, yeah. It, the, or, or yeah, city services maybe, then the, the, the condition would be that, you know, prior to plat approval that um, the private drive needs to be inspected and brought up to sufficient standards, sufficient standard to um, allow for the service of city service vehicles to to traverse the private drive to these parcels. So, would we be okay with a private paving company coming in, you know, and making an assessment as far as you need to fill this in, cover this over? Yeah, we won't govern that. It just the the end result needs to be um, that you know we'll take a look at it before platting and. So then how do, can, we, can so how do we proceed with this motion? If you're interested in making the condition, basically what I just said would be that, you know, that you would approve this variance subject to the private drive being inspected and brought up to a sufficient condition by staff, uh, you know, approval that it's sufficient to service city service vehicles, which would be law enforcement, primarily fire and, 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 and sanitation vehicles. All right, so I will make the motion uh, to grant the variance subject to the condition as stated uh, by Mr. Rosenthal. Thank you, Mr. Dickinson. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Gregory. Uh, is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed like sign. Motion carries, that passes. Moving to fiscal year 2023 audited financial statements, Ms. Thompson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as you know, each year we um, engage with external auditors to um, audit the city on our financials, um, internal controls, operating efficiency, um, federal and state guidelines. Um, Malden and Jenkins was our auditor for the 2023 financials and will, um, and I'm not going to attempt to say his last name because I'm not sure <laughs> how it pronounces, um, but he is going to go over the, um, those audited financials with you. Thank you, Beth. Thank you, uh, Mayor and Council. Uh, Thank you for coming in, Will. Uh, my name is Will Derzis. Uh, I'm a director with Malden and Jenkins and have uh, worked on the city's audit for um, the past five or six years um, now. One thing I do want to mention that uh, may or may not may or may or not have been uh, shared with everybody, but tonight I am presenting a, uh, a final draft of the financial statements and results of the audit. So <clears throat> with that being said, we, uh, we are done. The city's completely done. There's, there's nothing else left to do, but there are uh, two reports that we need from uh, a third party before we can formally date and issue um, our opinions in the final version of the ACFR. But for all intents and purposes, um, the material that, that you've received and, the, and what I'm working off of uh, is the final, final version of things. And um, once we get those report dates, we'll have final reports available. And so with that said, I will be working off of the uh, auditor's discussion and analysis, which I believe you all have copies of. And just starting on, uh, starting on page two, you can read uh, a little bit about the, um, the, our, our firm, Alden and Jenkins. We serve over 700 clients throughout the uh, greater southeast, one of the national leaders for, for governmental audit services. Adam Fraley is the engagement partner. Uh, I'm Will Derzis. I'm the engagement director. Page three, you can find some additional information about the firm and other um, CPA services that we offer. Uh, but working off of page four, there are some uh, items that are required communications that I uh, need to inform uh, management and those charged with governance. Uh, our responsibility as external auditors is to express uh, an opinion on the city's financial statements um, in accordance with standards accepted within, within the United States and as well as, well as standards applicable uh, specifically to uh, governments within the state of Georgia. So we will issue an unmodified report again once, once our uh, 
report date is determined. Um, government auditing standards require that we uh, issue a report on our consideration of the city's uh, internal control over financial reporting and on test of compliance with certain laws, uh, regulations, contracts, grant agreements, uh, things of that nature. The city, uh, as you know, does prepare an, uh, an ACFR or an annual comprehensive financial report um, consisting of an introductory section, of the financial statement section, as well as a statistical section. This goes above and beyond the um, state requirements each year, and so, um, so the city should be commended for providing and uh, compiling such a report. And moving on to, to page seven, I'll just touch on some of the highlights um, of the city's uh, financial statements. So at the government-wide level, there are um, uh, a report on, on two statements, the net position and statement of activities. So for the year ended, 2023, um, highlights of the government-wide note, total assets of approximately 243 million, offset by approximately 87 million of liabilities, uh, resulting in the city reporting a uh, net position or equity, as, as you can think of it, as approximately 125 million. Now the majority of that, or excuse me, 157 million, the majority of which is um, encumbered by its investment in capital assets of about 125 million. Approximately 7 million of that equity position is considered restricted, leaving about 24 million um, considered unrestricted and available for operations. Moving on to page eight, this touches on uh, the tr a, um, a revenue breakdown of the general fund, which is the city's primary operating fund and uh, of primary interest to the financial statement users. Uh, as you probably know, property tax, sales, other taxes, um, franchise, business and occupation, all, all those taxes comprise the majority of revenues collected by the, by the city's general fund. Uh, but there are some additional revenue sources as well, including charges for service, intergovernmental licenses and permits. And on the following page, page nine, you can see a breakdown of where the majority of the expenditures, what function they belong to, public safety being number one, uh, followed by public works, housing and development, culture and rec, and uh, health and welfare. On page 10, you can see a, a six year summary of the net change in the general funds fund balance or its equity so net income or net loss and the city's reported a, a positive um, positive results in the past five of six years uh, so that's good news there and on page 11 you can um, get a little more information uh, one thing that we that we look at is to see how much of the city's general fund fund balance is available to cover uh, expenditures and um, Monroe's is a, for 2023 is approximately 151 days, which exceeds uh, general industry benchmarks of 75 to 90 days or two and a half to three months. So that's also good news. Page 12, I'll just uh, briefly go over the, the business type <laughs> statement in that position. So the consolidated summary of the city's utilities and solid waste activities is reported separately from the, from the primary governmental activities. Um, the city's equity position in its business type uh, statement of net position uh, increased from approximately 106 to 107 million. Uh, approximately 20 million of that equity is considered uh, available for operations, and approximately uh, 107 is, um, or excuse me, um, the remainder of that is uh, invested within the, the capital assets of the business type activities. And on page 13, uh, you can see a summary of the cash flows of the business type activities, which um, for 2023 were approximately 5 million in, in cash inflows from operations. It's a po positive number. Uh, the city has experienced uh, very good cash flows from, from its operations within the past several years. Um, and one thing uh, worth noting is um, the business type activities purchased uh, over 13 million of capital assets uh, a cash outflow during 2023 as well. Page 14 and 15 uh, discusses the footnotes that accompany the financial statements. Um, they're kind of a narrative behind the numbers to provide a little more
detail and, and analysis. At the bottom of page 15, um, like I mentioned earlier, once reports are, are formally issued, it will consist of a yellow book report, which is required for governments and those who have to follow government auditing standards. Uh, but as Beth also mentioned, there was, there's also a single audit report this year um, because the city expended more than 750,000 of federal expenditures and um, we report no, no issues or, or no compliance findings within, um, within the city's uh, federal grants programs. Page 17, just a couple other um, required communications. We um, encounter no difficulties in dealing with management, no disagreements or anything of that nature. Uh, we requested certain representations from management uh, and they provided those without an issue. On page 18, we did have some audit adjustments during, our, um, during, during the year uh, that were proposed to the funds and posted by management. Um, we also had uh, two past adjustments, meaning we discussed with management and they uh, elected to ultimately pass on recording certain adjustments. One um, related to what would be a new asset and offsetting debt related to a new GASB standard, and one related to um, some of the accounting treatment of the city's uh, downtown development authority um, regarding its downtown uh, development dollars programs. We are independent of the city. That's basically the cornerstone and of, of uh, auditing and, and without that and everything pretty much break down. Page 19, go over some of the uh, recommendations for improvements. Uh, we do have one item that was cited as a finding within the, within the city's um, yellow book report this year, uh, just related to a material adjustment um, to record the issuance of uh, some finance purchase arrangements and recording the, the assets and the offsetting uh, debt related to those. And then there are also three management recommendations. Um, these are points, recommendations, things that, that don't rise to the level of a finding. One related to um, an instance within the city's uh, purchase card and, um, and supporting documentation for that card. Some valuation um, issues on the city's uh, lease assets and liabilities. And again, as I, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, accounting treatment on the city's downtown dollars program. And then lastly, it, on page 20, um, you can read up on future new accounting standards that are going to impact the city um, issued by the GASB. If, if you're interested in that type of thing, they, uh, they keep us very busy, as, as you may or may not be aware. And um, some might apply in, in next year. Uh, some it will be uh, years beyond that. Um, but I just want to... Thank you for having me this evening and just um, extend some, some recognition to, to Beth, Logan, the entire finance team who, you know, there, there's a lot of work and um, a, a lot of testing that goes into what we do and so uh, we appreciate all their help and cooperation. Well, th thank you, Will. We appreciate you working with us. Are there any questions? I just want to say these guys were tough on us this year. They, they were wearing Ms. Thompson out. Um, so, and that's great. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so you know that you have a pretty clean audit here um, and good financial statements. Thank you. Are there any questions, for Beth? Um, I will say thank you to Will um, and his staff. Um, as Logan said, um, I told Logan one day. I said, um, "The citizens of Monroe can um, guarantee that we are not doing anything fraudulent or wrong because they have put me through the ringer this year." <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, that is a good testament to what um, the finance staff here does and what Malden and Jenkins does for us. So, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve. Motion to approve by Ms. Malcolm. Is there a second? Second. We give that one to Ms. Crawford. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. That passes. Uh, tonight, we have uh, two appointments to the library board. Uh, first, Ms. Uh, Sally Short would like to serve on the library board, and I need a motion to appoint Ms. Short for a six-year term to expire on June 30th, 2030. So moved. A motion by Mr. Dickinson. Is there a second? Second. A second by Mr. Gregory. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. That passes. Uh, second, Mr. Mark Hammes would like to serve on the library board as well. I need a motion to appoint Mr. Mark Hammes for a six-year term to expire on June 30th, 2030. 
Thank you, Mr. Gregory. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Second by Ms. Sams. Is there any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. That passes. Moving to the approval of the telecommunications and right-of-way management program agreement and resolution, Mr. Probes. All right, last item of business. This is an agreement with GMA and subsequent resolution that is needed so that they can be our consultant, if you will, to help us negotiate a lot of telecommunications right-of-way programs. Um, these will include things like cell tower leases, which are a hot topic right now. Um, we'll be working with a couple of different carriers on this tower in particular and maybe future ones uh, on Cherry Hill when that tank's built. So these folks are experts in, in this field and they know what the going rates are, what, how the structure should be so we are not taken advantage of and end up with a long-term low-paying lease like we currently have from about 1995. So um, that's why I'm asking or your approval of this, it'll be $5,119.87 this year, $8,776.88 next year. Thank you, Logan. Are there any questions for Mr. Probes? Or a motion? Move to approve. Motion to approve by Mr. Gregory. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Malcolm. Is there any discussion? Money well spent. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed like sign. Motion carries that passes. Moving to district items. Ms. Malcolm? I don't have anything other than I thought the town green uh, of the concert came off like a top. Oh, that was fantastic. And um, we might need in our downtown discussion of downtown development discuss maybe a few more upscale restrooms besides porta potties. But other than that, that's the only complaint I heard. Ms. Crawford? No, I just want to thank Jeremiah for taking care of me, but it really needed it bad. Thank you, Jeremiah. Mr. Boyce. No, sir. Ms. Sams. No. Ms. Brown. Nothing. Was that a? Nothing. Quite a night. Um, Mr. Gregory. I second Ms. Malcolm's request for more upscale bathrooms on the town green. And uh, also want to say thanks to everybody for keeping everything going so great, All, especially everybody mowing sides of the roads during the summer and everything, keeping it looking nice and fresh out there. Appreciate y'all. Mr. Dickinson. Nothing further. Um, I have a couple things. Uh, financial, your, your financial disclosure statements are due before July 1st. So if you need to get with uh, Beverly on that, please do. Um, I've had a couple of, uh, couple of notes from citizens over the, the last uh, several months, but especially this past month. We're doing the, the project, the sewer project on Glen Iris. And, and Miss Marianne Dowdy, sweet friend of mine, specifically called out people by name to say what a fantastic job they had done. So I'd like to get it on record. Uh, Clay Parker, Adam Gordon, James Smith, David Moody, Garrett Range uh, did uh, a fire uh, inspection for her. And uh, just the, the engineers have been wonderful working with her in order to know how appreciative she is. Uh, Sarah, Bryan, uh, Sarah Bryant, I'm sorry, sent me a note about the light out at Spring and Breedlove that was down on the 7th and said that she was just amazed that our public safety team and our utility workers worked so well together, keeping traffic flowing and safely, and that was handled. So... Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, next, and I'm gonna second what, what Lee said. Concert was out of this world. Um, Blooms is gonna be out of this world. We have uh, almost 200 vendors, 210, 220, 200, 220 vendors. So uh, Sandy and Laura Beth have been working their little fingers to the bone. Um, and it's a great time to be in Monroe, so thank you. Um, that being said, I want to obtain a, a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I have a motion by Ms. Crawford. Is, is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Malcolm. All in favor? Signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. That passes. Good night, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>